Good morning, my friends. Isn't it lovely that it's Saturday again today? It's lovely to be here with you, Miss Swayega. <laughs> and today's story is from the Old Testament times in the Bible. Let's see if you can guess it happened not long after the time of Joshua, you know, where the Israelites crossed the Jordan River on dry ground. The water waited for the Israelites to pass. And let's see if you can guess what happened next. They conquered Jericho. They walked around the whole city of Jericho for seven days, once every day. But on the seventh day, they walked around it seven times. And on the seventh time, they blew their trumpets and they shouted. And what happened? The walls came crashing down. And there was just one house that remained standing. Do you remember whose house that was? It was Rahab, that sinful woman who had turned her heart to God and pleaded with God for salvation. And God took her into the his nation, the Israelite nation. And not long after that is when this story happened. My friend, can you guess? Who is our story about today? So our story happened during a time when food was scarce. The Israelite nation experienced famine. That's when people go hungry. There isn't enough food for everybody. And I want to ask you a question. Are you one of the privileged ones that may be came to the mission during the youth conference and maybe you received five cabbage seedlings. So we've got quite a few cabbage seedlings growing in our garden. My children got some. And why do we grow food? Because because maybe one day food will be scarce or expensive and then you've got something to eat and to help your neighbours with. And then the important secret is that you learn to pray and say, Lord Jesus, I'm planting these seedlings that I received from you. Please bless them. Bless the vegetable patch, bless my efforts, and then you keep your own heart clean and free of weeds as well. And you'll see God will bless. He'll bless your vegetables. Anyway, let's come back to the story. It was in a time when the Israelite nation experienced famine. There was too little food. And there was a family, a father, a mother, and two sons, two boys. This father's name was Elimelech, and he said, it's too difficult in Israel. I'm going to take my family, and I'm going to move to a place where it's easier to get food. 
u elimeni kilo wati ai kunzi maka Israeli mzo hama nomde no ame ni ni lafa soto la kono guli. And he went with his wife Naomi and their two small sons Marlon and Kilion. So ulo babu elimeni kwa hama nukoska zawa kuhu Naomi na matota na ahab. And they went and lived amongst the nation called the Moabites. Bahamba bayosha na nisizwe zaga Moab. So these two boys, Marlon and Kilion, they grew up and they got used to life with the Moabites and I don't know, maybe they even forgot that they were Jewish. They became young men, obviously, they got enough food to eat, they grew up, they became young men and they married. And each of them married a young Moabite girl. But somehow life suffering had taken its toll. And with time, their dad, Elimelech, passed away. And it wasn't long after that. And the one son, Marlon, also died. And finally, even Kilion, the second son, died. Poor, poor Naomi. Here she was in a foreign place. She was all alone as a Jewish woman. Yes, she had her two daughters-in-law, but they were Moabites. And maybe they were less lonely because they were amongst their own nation, their own people, they were close to their own family. And they were also still young, they could carry on with life. But Naomi was overcome with grief and loneliness. You see, she never forgot her love for God. She never forgot her faith and her roots in, her, in the Jewish nation. And her heart just longed back home. What she didn't realize was that she had a young daughter-in-law who had been watching her closely. This young girl, Ruth, had grown to love her mother-in-law. She saw in her mother-in-law a deep, deep love for God she saw respect for others, and she noticed that her mother-in-law had something that was missing from the Moabites. And she realized that it was because Naomi served the living God, and she had taken God and made him the center of her life. Yeah, I like the way it's in Zulu because what does it mean to make God the center of your life? It's if you make him the most important in your life. And Ruth noticed this and she admired it. And she became so attached to her mother-in-law that she became like a real daughter. It was a beautiful relationship. But as I said, Naomi's heart longed back for her own people. And the day came when she decided, I'm going back home. Now, because her daughters, daughters-in-law were young, she didn't think it's fair to take them along. 
futhi ngoba phela la madoda kazakhe wayewatholile ayesemancane waqaba ngathi akulungile ukuthi ngwathathe she knew what it was like to leave your homeland as a young mother or as a young wife she had had to do it when she was younger and it wasn't easy ngokuphela wayeyazi ukuthi akulule ukuthi ushisizwe sakho uso umama omusha ngoba phela naye wayewenzile washiya abakubo esemusha and so she didn't think that she can really expect it of these two girls so she called them one day and she told them to sit down and she said I need to speak to you let's have a family meeting just the three of them and she said to them their names were Opa and Ruth and she said to them Opa and Ruth Come and sit here with me my daughters we need to discuss something about your future. Wababizi was opa no ruthi was anhlale la icena kwami sidinga ukuthi sikhulume ngekusasaleni. She said to them I'm old and I need to return to my own people. Wabatshena ukuthi mina sengimdala ngidingibuyela kwabakithi. I've lost everything I've lost my husband I've lost my two sons. Wase singilahlelwe ikhokonga ngilahlekelwe but you my two daughters you are young you are vibrant you've got your whole future ahead of you you can go back home and you can carry on with life go back to your families and start over and you know what happened both girls cried. They sobbed. They loved Naomi. And to hear her say that she was leaving them was too difficult for them. But Opa had started to think about her family and she thought, well, maybe it's right. Let me go back to them. And she went and she packed her things. She packed a few things from her husband who had passed away so that she could remember him. And then she went and she cried a lot. And then she greeted her mother-in-law and she left. And Naomi looked at Ruth. And Ruth was pale and she looked anxious and desperate. Do you know what it's like, children, when your heart starts pounding inside your chest? You can almost hear it and it feels as if it's going to jump right out. You're scared. And I think that is what Ruth felt like. She didn't want to leave Naomi. She did love her family. But she knew she couldn't love this belief this God-fearing woman. Through Naomi's example, Ruth had seen a higher life, a better way of living. It wasn't a life of bowing down to little idols or gossiping here and there or just looking after your own interests. It was a life of looking after the other person's needs. It was living by God's standards, respecting your husband and loving your neighbors. And not tolerating any sin in your own heart. And Ruth knew that what Naomi had was the most precious thing on earth. 
uru tu wai bonu kuti una omo abonu kuti loko uru tana ko wagu indo enche ka kule bilenya. It was more precious than anything, anything that she could get in this world. And that's when she spoke these famous words. I wonder if they are famous to you, if you if you recognize these words when I read them. I'm going to read it to you as it's written in the New Living Translation. And you can find it in Ruth chapter 1, verse 16 and 17. She said to Naomi, Don't ask me to leave you. What Naomi? Uruti, what Naomi? Do unga shuguti ngakshi. Wherever you go, I will go. Lapo ya kona ngizo hamba nao. Wherever you live, I will live. Lapo osala kona na mingzo osala kona. Your people will be my people. Abandu bako, bayo banga bandu bam. Your God will be my God. Unkulunkulu wako, uyo bongkulunkulu wamu. Where you die, I will die there. Lapo fa kona, na mingzo fa kona. And there I will be buried. Ile hapo futi enyo fa wakona eskoti nzo kubu. May the Lord punish me if I allow anything but death to separate us. What was Ruth saying through these words? She was saying to her mother-in-law, I've made a lifelong commitment. I want to serve your God. Nothing, no suffering, no sickness will ever separate me from the living God that you serve. You see, she had made her decision. It reminds me of another person in the Bible. His name was Daniel. He was far away from home, but he made his decision. You see, girls and boys, it's not just boys that can be strong. It's not just girls that can be decisive. Any of us who love the Lord can serve him with the same commitment as Ruth. She wanted to serve God. She wanted to live a life of humility and respect, purity, godliness. And so Naomi gave in and she said, Come my daughter, I'll take you along. And they left the land of Moab and they went back to Israel. And they moved to a little town called Bethlehem. It's a small town in Judea. And there they settled in a small little home. They were poor, they didn't have much. And they didn't have anything to eat. But Ruth obeyed Naomi always. And when Naomi sent her to go and collect food from behind the farm workers, Ruth would obey. She was never stubborn or willful or filled with self-pity. She never said, you know what, mom, why must I always go? Can't you just go for once? This shows me that she had found the living God and he had set her free. She was free of her doubts, free of her anxieties, and she served God with gladness.
Kutuwa inga na kusaba, nungabaza, wae konzu nkunu nkunu, nenja bulo. Now you know what children, God sees us from heaven. Liyazi mandwa, nkunu nkunu ya sibona ezuli. And he doesn't just look at us. We now look at Miss Wayega. I see glasses. I see a nice pink blouse with spots on. But if God looks at us, yes, he sees those things as well. But he looks deeper than that. And he looks at your heart. And he looks at what's going on inside your heart. And what have you closed your heart with? What are your thoughts that you're allowing in there? What are your desires and your motives and what is it that's going on in there? And when he looked at Ruth, he saw a pure heart that wanted only God. And God rewarded her richly for her faithfulness and her obedience. He gave her another husband, a godly man, and even one who was wealthy. That means he was rich. He was a respected man in town. He was an honorable farmer and he was a good businessman. And God spoke to this man, Boaz, and he said, Boaz, I want you to marry Ruth and look after Ruth and look after her mother-in-law. And Boaz obeyed God. And from their children, David was born, who, was, who became the royal family in Israel through all the years. Now I want us to think about this for a little bit. Ruth went from being a Moabite widow to becoming part of the royal family in Israel. And she didn't get this position because she looked for it and she wanted it and she chased it. You, that's what you call ambition. Some young children or young people, even older people, are ambitious. I want this, I want that, and I'm going to do what I can to get it. But that was far from Ruth. She wasn't ambitious, she wasn't selfish, she wasn't pushy. She wasn't even educated or popular. But God rewarded her because she was humble and obedient. Now, my child. Are you maybe in a struggle with sin? Maybe you are caught as if in bondage. Maybe in your life they rules things like arguing. Or disobedience. Or stubbornness. I want my way. Or lust. I'm a girl and I'm always looking at boys. 
around a boy and I'm always looking at girls. And these things fill your heart so much that you can't even learn properly anymore. And maybe you've recognized it and you don't want these things, but it's a struggle. So I want to invite you today to make the same commitment as Ruth. Call on the Lord Jesus and ask him to forgive your sin. He can give you the same power as what he gave Ruth to overcome sin. Think of it, he took her out of her Moabite life, her life with the Moabites, out of their habits, their ways of doing, the things that they were doing that were not right. And he drew her attention and he said, Ruth, I'm the living God, serve me. And when she obeyed, God showered her with many blessings. And he can do the same for you. And to the one who wants to make that commitment today, I want to invite you to pray with me. Let's pray together. Lord Jesus, firstly, we want to praise you and thank you. For putting the story of Ruth in the Bible for us to read. We know that you put it there because you want it to help us. Help us to open our hearts to the lessons that we can learn from Ruth's life. And now, Lord Jesus, you are my Savior. You have taken me from a life of sin and you have rescued and saved me. And you have always been faithful. When I've been tempted and I called on you for help, you have always come and helped me. You have given me the power to overcome and you've given me your peace. And I know that you can do the same for each of these children who are listening today. You see their hearts and to the one who is calling out to you today Lord won't you draw close help them to surrender their life to you to walk with you and so that your glory might shine through their life and Lord, we pray these things trusting in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Behold what manner of love the Father has given unto us. Behold what manner of love the Father has given unto us. That we should be called the sons of God, that we should be called the sons of God. Behold what manner of love the Father has given unto God. Behold what manner of love the Father has given unto us. Behold what manner of love the Father has called the sons of God. Behold what manner of love the Father shall be called the sons of God.